So I've got the actual first section there physically in my hand. Yes, okay, yes. Again, I want to try and work to the head, which is that part of the book, the top. That's called That's the head. That's what you call the head. Yep. And I drop that on. So we've got a nice, nice tip. So even though we're not using a wet tip, just make sure that's adhered, just give it a little bit of a help. Okay. From my end paper construction, I've already got my little, my next tip already on. So I release <coughs> that. Okay. Make sure I don't catch any thread in there. And again, lift it clear and find the head. And try, try again, try and get everything to the head because that makes the guillotining nice and neat later on. And then do exactly the same to the back. So there's the back section. And it really is a tag say of godsend because we, 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 over the months we've been trying various adhesives using raw animal glue. Animal glue? Yeah, well, tr traditionally <laughs> I would use it. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay, I'll just spin that around. So that's another section. Yeah, this is the back section. Again, I'm looking, oh, at, see, the, yes, yes. looking at the head. Okay, try and get things neat. Using my Teflon folder rather than the bone so I don't get any marking. And then finally, the last tip. Just have a look to see, make sure it has actually stuck. So we, yes, again, I see that. we're okay then. Yeah. It's got a re really good adhesion. Okay, then what I do is I just tidy the tapes up so I've got less things in my way. Okay. And now we want to put the glue in. Oh, no. I just pull my tapes. Again, so you've got to be totally careful that. that the glue doesn't squeeze through. Yeah, we want it to go through a little bit, but not all the way through. So, a bit of pressure, and then work the glue between the sections. Now, as soon as you're just painting it on, you've got to sort of work in between the sections. What we need to do next is what we call rounding and backing, rounding which is to backing. form a shape on the spine into a round, and then a shoulder for the boards to sort of use as an inch. Okay. Yes, I think I'm now, sure how we do that, that is put those to one side. First of all, I've got to put a little bit of a round on it. So I move my tapes out. <coughs> that looks pretty easy, but I bet there's a knack to do that. If there is a knack to it, I bet. Just give it a tap. Work your way along. That's it. Oh, that would help to create one of my books. Okay, so you're just, just shaping it. And I'm pressing. How's okay. that? That's You've okay, that's fine. fine. So I'll just start oh, looking, <laughs> sort of iron up the centre. Yeah. And just, just glancing blows. You've done that a lot of times, oh. knowing just how hard to hit. Take it out. Oh, that's and the dangerous bit. The oh. next stage oh, after I this really is putting all the spine course. linings on. The spine of the book first. What are they? What are they? Change? They're just for the decoration. Oh, I see. Okay. Oh yes, look. So that's green. Yep. Yes. And then put one on the um, the head oh, and the tail. Yes. We then Gosh. put this material, which is called mull, which is another spine line, and again for strengthening. To make up the case, we need to make up the spine. Is that going to be one book or several? This will be. We may get two books out two of books. that. Yeah. So what I have to do is choose. A piece that I'm going to be happy with. We don't <coughs> want anything that's got any um, gouges or any dips right, in no, the surface. Sense, yes, right. So we, we look for a piece. So again, I made myself a template. Yes. So I know that they'll all be similar. Mm. Okay. So I take this out. Do you make that glue yourself? No, we buy, we buy that. Yes. We buy that in. When we're doing as many books as we are, we want a little bit of help to sure. speed yes. things up. So I've made my gauge. Oh, this is the exciting bit. Okay. Just pull this to the edge. And then I know where to sort of hold it. Oh, it looks like a book already coming. <laughs> Just putting the two together. We're making this as a case as opposed to covering the book actually on the book itself. This will be lettered away from the book. And 
board on. Okay, and then move that out of the way so we've got the distance set. Yep. We're using some false bands. I'm dying for you to cover okay. over. Yeah. We're using some false bands so mm -hmm. to make those raised bands on the spine. Right. I've attached them to some manila paper mm -hmm. and they're in this, the right position for the tooling that's yeah. going to be on later. Right. Again, that's, that's we the made goal. them all the same because we yes. want everything to flow yeah, a little bit. Sure. Yes. And then we attach that to the centre, making sure I've got the, the panels in the right position. Oh, it gets exciting when it gets to this stage. So we, we turn in. So we can release paper so I don't get glue everywhere. I see the point. Swap of over my, my Teflon yeah. folder so I don't mark the leather so much. Okay. Just define that joint. So that is a full piece of vellum. So we've been practicing, well, testing different combinations of board and linings. I just want a little overlap. Just want to make sure it's stuck. Okay, <laughs> so I'll give it a nip now. You've done it before. If you was doing everything one after each other, mm -hmm. up to this stage, you've probably taken probably about six hours. Right. But that will be spread over maybe a week, a week yes, and a half, so because we, we need to, it's critical that we let things dry yeah, sure. and don't just do one after each other. As far as I'm concerned, the case is complete. We then take it over to the finisher. Yeah. to put all the gold the work gold on man. and bring it to life. Yeah. It comes in various widths, so if I position that just on the edge there, I know that this extra overlap, I can use that for some other gold work. So nothing's wasted. Right, now that's this exciting bit is now. Well, it's all exciting. Oh my oh, God, look at that. Oh, you have that's to be so absolutely accurate. incredible. You had to work so accurately to get the raised band to fall. This sort of production's done on an artist's work years after he's dead, and I'm still alive, so it's a great compliment. I'm thrilled to see it being born from nothing. We've followed it, and I get very excited about anything, and see, go to the printers to see 15 tons of paper in the workshops. That was my book, 15 tons of paper, and all the dedicated people there and now here seeing the binding of the book and the artwork. It's just a revelation. Chris said, why don't we talk to David see if he'd like to do an archive collection of his works? Um, because we knew it was his 80th birthday coming up in two or three years, and so we started at that point. So that's how this project started. And I was very happy to work with Chris um, and to fund um, the production of the book. And I'm even happier now I'm here at the Binders seeing it finished um, and seeing what a, an amazing piece of work it is. We wanted to do something um, that would make this book something more than the standard coffee table book. And we hit on the idea, wouldn't it be wonderful to have David talk about his favourite paintings, or the paintings in his personal collection that were meaningful to him. And so that's what we did. We went down to his home and his studio, he walked us through, we recorded what he said, transcribed what he was telling us about each of the paintings. And that was the uh, rough draft for the text of this book. This is a unique product. It is so beautiful and so lovely to be able to say that every part of it is done to the highest possible quality. The content is gorgeous, the printing quality is great. It's probably one of the best books that's been produced in England today, and I'm so fortunate to be involved with it. It's something that will be enjoyed now and enjoyed for generations to come. Stationers Hall in London, the venue for the launch of the David Shepherd Archive Collection. Stationers Hall is home to one of the city's famous livery companies. The Worshipful Company of Stationers is interested in all aspects of the stationery trade. It was formed in 1403 and was responsible, amongst other things, for the invention and maintenance of copyright.
books and printing first started in um, England, all books had to be registered here at the Stationers Company. Um, and I could think of nowhere better to launch this publication. I hope some of you have seen it already. And if you haven't, you'll have the opportunity after dinner to go and have a look and to place your orders. <laughs> the last thing I have to do is to uh, welcome David and Avril here, because without David, well, and without Avril, we wouldn't be here tonight. Um, and I hope you all enjoy yourselves. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, my hero, Mr. David Shepherd. I've been overwhelmed by this tone. I've followed the whole progress of this incredible achievement. And by the way, I must say that I'm humbled, quite sincerely, the fact that this has been done. Because a project like this is usually for an artist who's been dead 500 years. And it's just a lie. I'm just, I'm just Birthday, let's have 80 pictures. Well, there are 123 in this book. Just David kept coming through the door and said, Chris, Chris, I've got this picture. This really is a wonderful picture. This is just gobs going. Man. Gobs going. Well, perhaps the book's a bit larger than life, but then perhaps David's a bit larger than life. And I think it was a, it, it, all the challenges were well worth it. And as you've seen, there's a brilliant cross, cross section of images in the work. The meetings were always fun. One of the things I have to thank David for is always bringing in a great sense of humour to everything. He'd always walk through the door with a grin or say something like, Chris, you can't possibly do that. And then there'd be a smile and then we'd discuss it. And we didn't do it. <laughs> there are other people I should thank as well. And perhaps one who's been ever present and enormously influential is Duncan Spence. For his backing, his advice on all the aspects of the publication, his proofreading, his attention to detail, and for always making himself available to consult. But of course, most of all, I must thank David, having the talent, the application, and the hard work to produce the wonderful works of art in this book. And also thank him for his ability, as I said earlier, to make the hard work of publishing fun and to always approach our meetings with a sense of humour. I think this is a Rolls Royce of a production. It features an iconic British artist, and it's been made by British craftsmen. The David Shepherd Archive Collection is published in one worldwide limited edition of a thousand numbered copies, each one personally signed by the artist. It was launched in April 2011 to mark the artist's 80th birthday. In June, the book was awarded the 2011 Spears Award for Outstandingly Produced Book. The book comes with a full-size complimentary print for framing. This beautiful tiger picture has never been publicly released before and is exclusive to this collection. There is also an hour-long documentary DVD on David and the production of this book. Many of the books have already been reserved in advance. To secure your copy, please fill in an application form or contact Gateway Publishing at www.gatewaysark.co.uk.